Hello, my name is Scott Pletcher. I'm with Aplexus Technologies. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you through an SAP add-on that we have called Simple Retailing. And in a nutshell, it's a POS for people who don't necessarily need a full-blown POS. And I'll go into that a little bit more later. But first, a little bit about the company. We've been around since 2005. We're about 3, 000, or 300 people strong globally. We have offices in the uh, U.S. We're headquartered in, in the Seattle area. Um, we have offices in India, U.K., United Arab, Arab Emirates as well. Um, and we've, we've been engaged with many uh, well-known brands over the years. Uh, we're a premier SAP consulting partner, and we're also, uh, we've, we've done co-development and co-innovation projects with them as well. Um, we have five general business areas. Uh, one is consulting, we have staffing, the Aplexus Labs, which I'm a part of. We also have cloud solutions and application managed services. Now, my role in Aplexus Labs, I'm responsible for innovation and products. And so a lot of times what we see is we see some emerging technology, we'll do some proof of concepts or maybe a customer ask about something. And then ultimately, um, if, if there's a really good business case there, we'll, we'll turn some of that innovation into a sellable product. And that's similar to what has happened with uh, simple retailing. As you'll see, uh, it started out um, as a as a fairly, um, I guess, a fairly basic uh, solution long ago. And since then, we've been able to add functionality and turn it into what it is today. Um, a little bit about me. <clears throat> uh, I joined Aplexus in 2016, about 27 years of IT practice leadership strategy. I'm the one here with without hair. Um, <clears throat> I've, I've held many different roles over the years. Um, all throughout organizations. This is kind of my logo slide. Everybody has a logo slide. Um, and um, so I've been involved and had leadership positions in all these companies, uh, everything from uh, infrastructure operations manager to an agile coach and a project manager. So here's my, my standard disclaimer uh, when I'm giving product presentations. Uh, we're always evolving and we're testing and adjusting uh, so what you see here may be different, um, you know, next week as we have a new uh, feature drop and we implement that in the, in the core product. Um, some of the features that you may see here are experimental. I'll point them out uh, when we hit those. And the product may be lacking some features that maybe you find critical. Please let us know either by uh, sending, sending me an email or comment in the comment section below or um, some other way, please please let us know if there's something that's missing. Chances are it's probably a pretty quick thing to implement that feature. And we take our role seriously, but not ourselves, so feel free to get rowdy. If this was a live presentation, that would probably have a little bit more weight, but uh, it's a little hard to get rowdy against a recording. So what is simple retailing? Uh, as I said in the nutshell before, simple retailing is a pre-built application which enables some common retail processes and POS business capabilities without having to implement a full-blown POS system. And generally speaking, with our add-on solutions, we try to gear them towards uh, fitting about 60% of kind of standard functionality for a given, a given business capability. And then we, we know that there's probably gonna be about another 40% that is specific to the company that we may be talking to. That's based on our experience. Um, stuff like integration to a tax server, or maybe you have a certain payment processor uh, that we need to integrate to. So th those sorts of things are, are generally company specific. And then usually what we see is about 10% of that 40%, companies really wanna differentiate the experience. So that's the value proposition behind simple retailing and some of our add-ons is we want to be able to reduce the time to market and create as much value as we possibly can by pre-building all those things that kind of a, a base POS system should have. So that's available out of the box and then we can spend our resources and our time focusing on that that remaining 40 percent and hopefully we're, we're focusing more on this differentiating factor here to create new and interesting experiences for your retail customers. 
So I'm going to introduce you now to our fictitious company here. Um, the fictitious company's name is Blue Danube Furnishings. And we use this company to tell a story. Um, simple retailing for simple retailing. Um, Blue Danube was founded in 1954, has uh, many locations across the Midwest. Uh, they generally see themselves as a low low cost uh, leader. Um, that's that's their strategy. Uh, but to to keep those costs low, they want to smartly invest in efficiency and multipliers. Uh, like technology and lean processes to keep their operating costs low. And so a few years ago, Blue Danube invested in, in SAP. They uh, selected SAP's uh, IS retail solution. And um, at that time, they're, they were moving off of an AS400 based uh, legacy custom built solution uh, from an ERP standpoint. They still at that time we're maintaining an AS400 custom point of sale system so that's what they're trying to replace today they've realized they can't really go any much further on on their growth and their um, their low-cost strategy they really have to phase out that AS400 system so they're in the market for a POS system well their transaction volume is not very high per store uh, but their average ticket uh, price is pretty high and so traditional POS systems really are geared more towards, um, you know, maybe checkouts or groceries or high volume transactions, and they're pretty expensive. And so uh, what we saw is an opportunity there to create something that has kind of looks and feels like a POS, but it's based on um, the, the master data that you already have in your SAP system, real time inventory visibility, um, and, uh, all the business processes that are already there inside your SAP system. So Blue Danube was looking for something that worked with their existing SAP landscape. They wanted something lightweight. Um, ideally, it would run on tablets and, and mobile devices because in some cases they want to be able to take that particular um, product or solution out when they're making deliveries and uh, allow the customer to maybe sign electronically um, as a proof of delivery. So simple retailing really skews more towards the real-time ERP driven space and there's there's a definite place in the world for full POS systems um, especially when you're talking about very high volume distributed locations that may not be always connected via network connection um, maybe there's some uh, heavy-duty offline requirements simple retailing goes a little bit different it tries to leverage more of the real-time interface so by that same token there's there's some trade-offs there and we realize that simple retailing is is not for everybody but we think there is a subset of of uh, potential clients out there where simple retailing makes sense because uh, they don't necessarily need all those extra features that would come with your standard POS. From an architecture standpoint, um, it's fairly simple. It's uh, HTML5, fully HTML5 um, responsive design from a front end standpoint. We leverage the NetWeaver gateway. Um, to uh, interact with the backend SAP system and we leverage all the standard um, APIs to be able to interact with with the system so without further ado we're gonna go ahead and do a little walkthrough here so I'm gonna log in this is the main screen here I will say that we do have a couple different options for a main screen this is the traditional kind of username and password there's another option that we've um, we've created that's more conducive to maybe uh, a, t a tablet, for example, because it's very difficult to enter your password, you know, on a little tablet screen. So uh, what we what we've done is created a where uh, a screen where you can maybe scan your your employee badge, and then you just enter a PIN number, and that logs you in. So I'm going to go ahead and log in here, and here is the main screen. Here is the main screen of simple retailing. So we have some status bar or some uh, status areas up here. And this particular framework that you see is um, is part of a, a greater 
uh, platform that we have. Uh, this particular framework right now is just, a sh just showing the simple retailing application. So uh, if we look through here, we have different tiles re um, relating to different uh, business processes. I'm going to start with customer here. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this, but one of the things I do want to point out is these are customers straight from the SAP backend. So we don't have necessarily have to have a separate data store uh, for this. So we can go in here, Sam Billings, for example, I can go to view customer or I can edit customer. I'm going to go into view and from here I can see some information about Sam. Um, his uh, address information. We do support multiple shipping addresses and built to addresses, uh, multiple contact information, what the preferred contact information is. Um, here's a tab that shows he has an open quote. We can link from here to, to look at that quotation. Uh, past orders, recent transactions. And this tab right here is probably one of those things that would fit in that 40%. Uh, some some retailers offer third-party financing and let's say for example that we've integrated with a third-party financing like a synchronicity or uh, something like that um, and the customer has already applied for a line of credit and we can have this particular information in here so that when the customer comes in we can see what their line of credit is and uh, use that as a payment type. Another thing on the screen I'll show you here is under the personal details. One of the things that we think make this a little bit unique is the ability to create relationships. So let's say for example Sam Billings comes into the store and uh, either online or in store he, he identifies somebody else uh, who he, um, is a relation to him and let's say that uh, Ronald Trevis is his friend and so let's say that Ronald is shopping for something for Sam as a gift and so Ronald can come into the store identify himself as such oh you're a friend of Sam's yeah exactly I'm shopping for a birthday gift for Sam great and here's here's some of the things that are on Sam's wish list so something like that um, that's where that, that scenario could come in maybe an important date here is his anniversary so all these things are, are pretty customizable it really depends on what sort of information um, the, the the client wants to be able to maintain. Uh, we can create a new one here. I'm not going to do that. One of the things here is um, we've enabled a feature where you can actually enroll a photograph. We have another product. Uh, it's a clientele product, and um, it 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 has the opportunity if the person opts in to be able to identify somebody through facial recognition. So the scenario might be. Uh, they're walking into a store. We have uh, some cam cameras trained on the store. Uh, we identify the person by facial recognition and we send a push notification to one of the sales associates who then is able to greet the customer by name uh, as they come in the store. Uh, may sound a little big, big brotherish uh, to some people, but um, I think um, as, as we become more and more accustomed to those types of things, I just wanted to point that out that we do have the ability to do something like that and, and store additional attributes and information along with the customer record. So I'm going to cancel back out of this and I'm going to go into I guess kind of the the, the centerpiece of um, the, the uh, simple retailing and that's uh, what we call the point of sale. I'm first going to go I need to open a cash drawer so we have some fairly basic cash management functionality inside Simple Retailing. Um, we understand that a lot of different companies have different ways that they handle this and different checks and balances. So we didn't try to build a very complex onerous uh, process. Uh, rather, we, um, we just built some basic functionality and, and this is perhaps one of those 40% things that we need to customize specifically. So I'm going to go ahead and open up I'm going to say the, the store's balance opening cash is $1,500. And what it already did for me here is it automatically opened counter number one. We have this demo configured such that it automatically opens just to save time. But as an example, I'll show you uh, opening counter two here. Um, I can select the sales associate. I can select the opening balance for that particular till and then enter my denominations and I can open the counter and you really need to as associate that open counter with an individual because you want to have that kind of chain of custody and that accountability. 
So in this particular case, we've already got a counter open. And I can click on this to go straight to the POS system or the POS screens, but uh, rather I'm going to go back to home. And just while we're here, I wanted to show you something really quick. We do have that responsive design and we've, we've been able to test it on everything from a full blown PC all the way down to an iPhone 5. Um, we really don't recommend anything less than like a nine inch tablet because once you get that small, then, um, it doesn't, the screens are really, really tough. Uh, the tiles may look okay, but the screens are really difficult to use. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go into PO, POS point of sale. It's gonna ask me for a counter. I'm gonna go ahead and select that counter and I'm gonna accept and open. And so the view you're seeing here is the visual catalog. Now in this particular case, they had pictures of all their products. And that's not required, but it's just something that maybe helps uh, the sales associate very quickly visually identify what, um, what the customer is shopping for. Um, another point, another feature up here is we can have multiple uh, bills going on at any one time. Let's say that um, our customer is in there, we started, uh, we started a bill, uh, we add some stuff and then they start thinking about what else they want to buy and they're contemplating this and that. So we can go ahead and help another customer by starting a second bill and go ahead and take them to check out. Oh, well, we have this first bill kind of reserve or in holding, I guess. So I'm going to cancel out of that. Uh, from here, um, I'm going to add a couple things. And you could also do it via the quick search up here. So I've added these two items. You can see they pulled over. I got the total here. Now tax is one of those things that's uh, usually pretty specific to each uh, client. Um, people have different ways of handling tax. They may have a service that we need to call out to. They may have kind of static tax tables. Um, in our fantasy land with Blue Danube here, we're just gonna assume they're in a a uh, tax sales tax free location. So there's no sales tax here. We also have the ability to add discounts. We can add discounts from like a promo code, um, uh, percentage, or a value, just a flat value. In this particular case, uh, let's say this customer came in with a coupon uh, and we'll just use the, the promo code demo, which was on that coupon and that's equivalent to a hundred dollar discount. So you can see we applied our discount here. Now this is, um, this is where we can specify if this is a known customer. So by clicking on that button, I can then get a list of the customers in the database here and I can do a quick search. Uh, so I could pick Sam, for example, here. And now this, this particular transaction is gonna be associated to Sam. But in this case, I'm just gonna go back to walk-in. Okay, now we're ready for payment. Uh, we do have the ability to accept multiple tenders and split tenders across the uh, invoice. Um, we also have the option to, to apply a coupon code here as well, uh, above and beyond that, maybe that discount. Again, these are things that are probably specific to each customer or each uh, client. Uh, so we have check card. We also have loyalty card in case maybe there's, you have a lo loyalty program and certain number of points equate to dollars or something like that. Uh, we're going to just assume that this person came in with a briefcase full of $100 bills and they're just gonna pay cash, $3,000 cash for this. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on pay. And so you can see we've printed out a little receipt here. We have a lot of flexibility on our output. It can be anything from like an eight and a half by 11 type invoice sheet of paper, all the way to a little roll printer, something like that. This is a, a format of you know kind of like a smaller printer. You can see we have the items here the grand total and the change due down here. Now, if this happened to be a known customer, we we could also, um, and we had an email on file for that known customer, we, we would also have a button here that says email. So we could provide the option to just email this receipt to the person. In this case, we did a walk-in customer, so we don't know them, we don't have their email. And so we can go ahead and print that, or we can close that. So I'm going to show you another um, another view of our POS screen here, uh, and this really isn't isn't um, it isn't a fit for Blue Danube and, and how they do 
their their selling activities. But this is a this is a um, a view that's more accustomed to like entering a transaction or something like that. Um, like a, a grocery store, if you had a lot of uh, kind of uh, small items coming that you needed to scan, uh, you would just scan them here and then they'd appear down here. You could pay the same way. Every, everything's pretty much the same. This is just a way to um, be able to, to scan stuff using a barcode reader rather than um, you know f filtering through a visual catalog like this. Okay, and so now um, just to kind of complete the little process here, I'm going to go ahead and close this counter. Uh, it's the end of my shift. I'm going to say I just counted up the money and I got um, $1,480. Um, and it realizes that my, my system closing balance should have been higher and I got to enter some sort of reason for discrepancy. Uh, bought pizza. with till money and I'm going to go ahead and close that counter. Okay, so if we go back into cash drawer here, we can see that counter 1 is now closed. It's, it says it, we could open it. In other words, if there's another shift uh, picking up, we could open it again. But in this case, I'm going to go ahead and, and continue to uh, the end of day. And so <clears throat> what we have here, this is all dummy data, by the way. But what we have here is kind of a little report that shows what happened during the day. Okay, um, Joanne had, had this counter open from this time to this time. And here's the system balance and here's the actual balance. And you can see in this case here we had a discrepancy and um, I guess the, the customer didn't provide enough change or something like that. So once we're okay with that, we go ahead and hit post end of day and that actually posts all the financial transactions inside the SAP system. So now we're going to go back out and we'll show a few different options, a few different ways. Let's say for example um, we have a customer, Sam Billings is coming in and he said, hey look I'm, I'm moving into a new apartment, I need to furnish it, um, I need to get some quotations for some furniture and um, I, I want to shop around. Okay fine. Um, so we go ahead and come in here and we can create a quotation. Here we can choose the customer from the list and it'll pull in their billing address and so forth. Or we can just add a new customer uh, here and then just add the product names to this. What I'm going to do is pull up an existing quote that we have here. And so here's Sam's existing quote. Uh, has all his, his information here and he was interested in this Lawrence leather chair. Uh, 799 and from here we can we can share it we can send it to Sam or we can send it maybe to a friend of his uh, we can also generate a PDF uh, or print it out if he wants to take it with him but uh, the nice thing here is that once we generate those quotes these are actually quotes inside the SAP system and from there we can very easily create it to a sales or convert it to a sales order just by clicking on this button I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go back to the main screen and go into sales order. So let's say, for example, um, in this case, uh, Sam ordered a custom piece of furniture. It's not something that we normally keep stock in, stock of, but it's maybe a special order. So again, the process would be very similar to um, creating uh, a quotation. In this case, maybe you have a reference to a, a quotation uh, for Sam, and uh, it would pull in all the appropriate information here. I'm going to cancel out of that. So let's look at this order. It's very similar um, to the, the quotation. The sales order has all the pertinent pieces of information and it has enough information to be able to create a true legitimate sales order on the SAP side. So all this stuff is, um, we're, we're just uh, looking at this in view mode here. And so from here we can create an invoice off of this. Um, Again, we, we do support split split tender here. Um, in this particular case, uh, again, Sam comes in with uh, a briefcase full of cash. $3,000, he plops it on the table and we owe him um, $1,045 in change. Go ahead and submit that. So then I've just created that invoice. I can then print my invoice. This is another view of a different type of invoice. Um, it's probably more custom to what a furniture store would have. It's kind of a bigger form factor. But like I said, we have a lot of, uh, a lot of flexibility there. 
Um, and we can also create a shipment from here. Now let's say for example in this case this is a drop ship from a vendor of ours. We would put in the information as we had it, tracking number, packing dimensions, all that stuff, and we could submit that. And that, that truly does create a legitimate shipment inside SAP and we can track that. And then kind of the next step is we can schedule a delivery for that. So I'm actually going to go back out here. Um, again, how do we get that? Is So we got quotations and then they can be converted into sales orders and sales orders can then be invoiced and then invoices or uh, sales orders can also have shipments created for them. Now let's say for example let's switch gears. Uh, we've sold something to Sam and we need to go ahead and schedule a delivery for him. So I'm going to go into the scheduling delivery application here and you can see it kind of looks like Outlook or calendar view and so we can you know double click we can click somewhere oops click somewhere in there we can say there's the delivery date the delivery times 4 p.m. Uh, if we had the sales order number we'd probably put that in there um, Brett's going to be the driver and we're going to use that to truck number one so um, I don't know where that guy went I think it went off my screen here I think I entered the wrong date but anyway um, we would create it would create a, a delivery like this <clears throat> And if, if need be, we could move it around the screen and reschedule it. Um, but I'll show you the next step of the process. Um, let's say, for example, we have the delivery scheduled. And, and now the truck's all loaded. It's going out to, um, it's going out to uh, Sam's house. And we need to collect proof of delivery. So we just go ahead and click on this guy. Uh, oh, this is Larry. Sorry. So here's the order, here's Larry's the customer. Who is it received by? Larry and self. And okay, Larry, can you look at the, the, the delivery and make sure it's to your liking? Yep, everything looks good. Okay, please sign here with your finger. Okay, so Larry signs on the little iPad or tablet. We go ahead and capture that, we save that. And that does two things. Number one, it serves as a proof of delivery that we delivered this thing. It, and it also allows us to close out the sales order, close out the invoice, and also be able to move that revenue from kind of a waiting to be delivered uh, bucket into a um, sales revenue bucket. So all that happens in the background, that all happens in SAP processes from that proof of delivery. Now, uh, unfortunately, sometimes customers have returns and we do uh, support returns. We'll create a new one here. If we, hit, if we knew the invoice, we could just enter it here. But if we didn't, we could um, look it up by customer or order name or something like that. We'll just go back here to uh, the invoice and this demo is, is set up hard-coded to, to plop in a uh, invoice here for us. And we're going to pick, oops, we're going to pick this guy. We're going to return that guy and say, did not like it. Okay. And then we go ahead and submit that. And that creates the return inside SAP. Now, if you know anything about SAP processes, there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that happens when you're doing sales orders and invoicing and returns. Um, and we rely on the SAP processes to just do all that for us so we don't have to front end load those. So when we do a return, we can go ahead and, and receive that inventory back into our stock. Uh, we could put it on um, saleable stock or we could put it on quality inspection. Maybe it needs to be inspected before it goes on to back into the saleable stock bucket. But nonetheless, our inventory is going to be whatever the inventory is in the SAP system, which is what our inventory is in the financial system. So it's, it's kind of nice to be able to tie everything like that. So I'm going to cancel out of here. And just a few more things to show you. Um, we do have some reports. These are just kind of dummy reports that we put in here. Um, those are clearly one of those 40% things that um, that we really kind of need to customize based on what the customer needs are. Some some people don't want sales reports, don't want uh, uh, associates looking at sales reports. Some do. They have incentive programs, something like that. Um, but in our particular case, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time going through the reports. Go back out here. Oops. That's the main main page there of our framework. 
So um, we also have a settings area. This is where you know, uh, users could specify certain things. Uh, some of these may be hidden depending on, um, depending on uh, what sort of uh, features and, and functionality you want to allow your, your users to use. Um, finally, I'm going to show you something that, uh, remember how I said some of the things that we have in here are more experimental and early access type stuff. Um, it's this, this concept of reservations. Now, we have the delivery date. This is the demand. In other words, uh, we have these orders that have come in and we need to allocate inventory to them to be fulfilled. And we have our available to promise. This is our supply. And so the concept here is we kind of have two timelines side by side and we can allocate certain things. So uh, this Plank Cocktail Table Set, here's the Plank Cocktail Table Set. Now watch this number right here. We have 58 of them in stock. I'm gonna allocate one of those to the sales order. I'm gonna allocate this other one to the sales order. Uh, this Colby Ottoman Storage, you can see, watch that number, oops. So it unallocates and then I allocate and it gives me a little warning if I wanna unallocate that. So. So in this particular case, what I've done is I've already, I've just allocated inventory to this order. But the problem is I have this Cameron queen, uh, uh, queen storage bed is out of stock. So I, as kind of a customer service person, would probably have to figure out a way. Either I go ahead and call the customer and say, hey, we can deliver these two items by December 11th, and, but we're going to, we're back ordered on this other item. Or maybe I have to hold this delivery until a later date. Um, and, and so we have a slider up here that you can kind of slide forward in time and back time. Uh, same thing here with your available to promise supply. Um, if we had PO or purchase orders coming in at, let's say, um, November 16th, for example, and we're right here at November 15th, um, we would see these quantities change. And, and so that's the concept. As you can see, this doesn't completely work. This is just more of a mock-up. But we're running it by some folks trying to, to see if this format works and this format makes sense. Um, and we've had some pretty good interest in that. But that's one of the experimental things uh, that we have on the radar. Now, here's kind of the call to action for, for you, the viewer, is if you saw something that you thought we needed to have inside that product, uh, please let us know and we can probably build it in pretty quickly and at a probably a surprisingly low cost compared to other POS solutions. So I am going to go back to my presentation here. Oops. Go forward here. And so we've just seen a walkthrough of, of um, the simple retailing application. Um, some additional integrations that we typically see are payment processor integrations, uh, third party and private label credit integrations, and also uh, a lot of retailers are investing in SAP's customer activity repository. And that's a real key piece um, from an integration standpoint if you have your customer, um, if you have your customer history in SAP CAR, we obviously need to be able to access that to provide visibility to the sales associate. Now, who is simple retailing for? Really, like I said, it's more of a, an alternative to some of the more expensive, complex, purpose-built POS systems. Uh, some industry examples are maybe sporting equipment, um, uh, spirits and wine, uh, outdoor equipment, um, boating, farm equipment, that sort of thing, um, where um, the, the volume is not so high but it's, it's really important to have a, a POS system that you can train your, your associates on and have those common business processes if you've evolved past the uh, you know, cigarette box full of cash in the corner type thing. So what's a typical engagement look like? Uh, generally speaking, the, the first task that we have to do is we want to run through the existing functionality of, of simple retailing and then baseline that against what you need to do. Um, and then we want to carve off a little bit about how do we create some differentiation um, inside the application and the processes. Then we're going to provide an estimate and, and we'll agree on that, hopefully. Um, and then we go to, uh, we start building. 
And this is generally building all those things that are above and beyond what the baseline contained. And this is really important here that we have an iterative process because a lot of the things we do on a POS system have, uh, have to do with um, user experience. And it's really important that the folks that are using this on a day-to-day -day basis have input and they give some feedback because ultimately they're gonna be the ones that are gonna be the best providers of how we can improve the process and create that differentiation. Ultimately, we're gonna to get to a point where we feel like we have enough that we can launch the product. Hopefully we're gonna have a nice party because everything went smoothly. And then we turn our attention to what sort of things can we do to improve, um, improve the, uh, the product. So that is my explanation of simple retailing. Here's my contact information if you want to reach out. Again, I please beg you, if you see something that you, you thought we really needed but it's not out there, please let us know and uh, take all that input very seriously. And we like, that's, that's how we like to improve the product. So um, thank you very much and uh, look forward to working with you or speaking with you in the future.